everybody, it's uh, Matt Zuliger of Shades of Black. Um, first off, just finished an album about a week ago. It's entitled Chaos. Uh, if you're a fan of my music, if you're not, I don't know. Be sure to pick it up. I have a download link in the description. I'm sure you guys will like it. But anyway, today I'm going to talk about uh, the Arabic scales, the Egyptian scales, or whatever. Uh, that you guys have been asking me about what, what skills you use and all that stuff. And, uh, I'm going to show you uh, the scales that I primarily use in a lot of my Arabic songs and technical Arabic songs. Um, those scales are the Byzantine scale, uh, Phrygian dominant, and the diminished scale. Uh, first off, I'm in B flat tuning. So, all the way. which most of the songs off the album are. Uh, Daytona is in drop C, um, so is Beginner. Uh, but, and then I have two other weird things which I'll discuss in a little while. But, first off, I'm gonna run through the, the Byzantine scale, and I'm just gonna run through all the scales real quick and show you what they really sound like. So first off, here's Byzantine. Phrygian dominant. And then diminished. Now, the difference between uh, Phrygian dominant and the Byzantine scale, because they both sound very alike, there's only one note. And that's the seven. Um, Byzantine has a major seven, which. Uh, you know, only one, one note away from the octave, while Phrygian Dominant does. That's the only difference. Here's Byzantine is how it ends, Phrygian Dominant how it ends. Now, I, I normally use Phrygian Dominant uh, for a lot of things because it's more practical. Because the leading tone that that 7 uh, has, it's weird to write. I mean, I've written stuff before in it, but I mainly use for the dominant because of the practicality of it. Because you're running through, um, when you reach the octave, you're running through the scale, uh, you'll find that there's a chromatic right here for a Byzantine, so you're going that. Sounds kind of weird. I mean, depending on the chord progression behind it or whatever you're doing with it, it can sound really cool. And other times it can sound terrible. So that's why I usually use Fiji Dominant because the way it ends is. It sounds really cool. But, like I said, like major seven, if you want to use a leading tone, if you're ending uh, progression behind, you just. Something like that. I don't know, because you you got that leading tone. But so those are the scales. Now I'm gonna break it down real quick for you what, what each scale is. Um Byzantine. It's five, six on the A string, five, six, and then D string, four, five, seven, eight, and then um, on the G string. It's six and seven. So, and then of course the other one just instead of six and seven, it's five and seven. And the diminished scale, which is a freaking weird scale to use, I think. Um, but people have made it sound too high, like Jeff Loomis. Well, anyway, uh, it's just five, six, eight, and then. Four, uh, six, seven, and then four, five, seven. So, it's just a weird scale to use, especially like. It's just a weird scale to use. It's only 
I mean, the whole scale is just half step. Half step. So if you just practice that, you know, you'll be good. But what I recommend for if you're wanting to get these scales down and practice them, I mean, what I did the first time I ever used this scale, I didn't even know what it was called. I thought I made it up. But the first thing I ever did with it um, is you just get a drum track for it. And you know, you set it to eighth note on this go basis, consistent eighth notes. And just run through it. And uh, I'll show you that here. Real well. So, you know, if you want to go real slow, this is 16th notes at 120 BPM. These are all drum tracks I made, by the way. So, if you're going through this. I recommend getting, uh, setting up mini drums if you don't have those. I mean, if you if you want mine, I have a. I just set up a bunch of eighth note double bass kicks consistently to practice with, with the snare on two and four, and then a half time, and then the same thing for sixteenth notes. That was sixteenth notes. I mean, you can go all the way up. I mean, it's at half time right now. I can go to one ninety five BPM and just. recommend doing it at half notes because then you can really feel what you're doing. Here's half notes at 120. This is 150 BPM at 8 notes. Right now, I'm, I'm only, when I'm doing that, I'm stopping at the octave. Well, if you want to make it continuous, uh, I would, what you would do is you have to play the the two um, of the scale uh, when running. So instead of going, uh, it'll be, that's why I don't usually use the, the Byzantine. This is, I'll do on Phrygian Dominant. So I'm going to put it at 120 BPM 16th notes. Good way to practice it. And then other than that, uh, I would memorize, you know, just like any other scale, if you're not familiar with scales, then here's a, it's a good video. But, um, memorize it on every, every string, the entire scale, strictly. So, uh, if you're doing Phrygian Dominant, it's... You know, practice using chords in the scale, just find out where everything is on the neck, you know. A uh, useful thing I've always memorized is that when you're in a drop tuning, the octave because I mean you're going to be most likely playing in the key of whatever tune you're in. So I'm in B flat. So whenever I'm writing a song, it's going to be in B flat, whatever. If I'm using minor scale, it's going to be B flat minor. But so memorize the octaves. That way you can move around really nice. So the octave is. I never use it. I never use the E string, but yeah, remember it says I got the octave. Now I'm gonna show some, show a couple licks uh, where I've used uh, these scales. Primarily a lick where I've combined. Uh, you know the, the Byzantine scale with diminished scale 
because I usually I never use the diminished scale as, a, as a, to write a riff. I usually use it as like the tail end of a solo or whatever. And so in the song Cage Fight off off Chaos, I have a lick. It's kind of just it's not really a solo. It's just a lead part, and the tail end of it ends in diminished. And I'll show you the song real quick. So what I'm doing there is the end is diminished while the rest was fridging down. So that, that's that's a practical application for now. You can see how it really sounds and just in the song Cage Fight it'll be like pretty good. But I love it. I love that whole riff. But if you want to hear, um, I've, I've made a riff just recently. I haven't recorded a song for it, anything. I've combined all three skills, and it's going to be on a clean set, and it sounds like this. Cool riff. So, the beginning is fridging down it. And now it goes to Byzantine. Back to fridging down it. Now it goes to the Mishko. And see, if you combine them right like that, you can get a really cool sound. And if you want to study more Arabic or whatever, like I've done so much section for Arabic stuff. Uh, I actually went to a library in the mall we have here, and I, they have a traditional or foreign section, and I got this CD called Arabic Cafe, which literally just songs that if you were to go um, over to India or whatever, and you were to sit in a cafe, that's the type of music that we'd be playing. And so it's just a compilation of a bunch of different artists. Uh, it's all Arabic stuff, and I've listened to the whole CD. Here. Oh, some of it's cool. It's, it's, some of it's weird, but you can really hear what they do. They use a lot of chromatic. I don't know, it's crazy stuff. And then uh, I don't know yeah, how much you guys are into different types of music. You only just listen to metal. I listen to everything. I like metal. I mean, I'm not a huge rap guy, but I, I, there's some rap that I like. It's, you know, if I want to chill, I want to listen to rap or uh, reggae or just chill music. One of my favorite bands is Riverside. Uh, I think they're Polish or whatever, and they 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 have this this Arabic influence in it, but it's like it's progressive rock. It's not progressive rock. It's rock. And every song is like epic. And it's just it's actual music. That's that's what I do. You know, you listen to them, it's all chugging, chugging. And it's just, somehow it just gets too late. Especially Deathcore. But, nothing against Deathcore. I love Deathcore. But, as far as music goes, it's not really beautiful. But, Riverside is one of my favorite bands. Uh, there's this Arabic, uh, Trio called Nias, and it's some cool stuff. There's um, here, but chick singer. <laughs> you can't understand it. But. 